amongst the technical people as well as non-technical people about the well, cyber security. Today we will be discussing the Internet of Things. So IoT has kind of become a pandemic all over the world and of course including Spain. Well, regarding myself, already in that for me. So before everything, um, well, I'm sure that all of you here are aware of cryptocurrencies and perhaps some of you have been mining these currencies in the past. However, many people are not aware of cryptocurrencies or perhaps the knowledge or understanding they have of them is just about uh, data has been uh, disseminated on media. Many people are not even aware of the value of capital currencies and they don't know whether that value is tangible or not. Some people wanted to buy cryptocurrency, they just log on to a forum, they just got uh, paid 10,000 euros and they just got a few coins in return. In the end, what they just got was kind of like a tiny metal that with no value at all. So these things have happened because they have not have been no success in explaining what cryptocurrencies are and what to do with them. A very important topic here also popular is cryptocurrency mining. It is very important to know what is mining and what are the profit that criminals make out of it. So mining of cryptocurrency could be difficult. And well, to understand that in a plain and simple language, we could easily explain what cryptocurrency mining is about. Okay, let, let's use this as an example. You buy this and then you buy that and then you hit it over and over again against um, these rocks and then you will get like cryptocurrencies out of it. Yes, of course, there are mathematical calculations involved and depending on the currency may be more or less difficult to make a profit, especially compared to the electrical or energy consumption that it takes. And if you think that you could kind of make a profit by buying three or four uh, graphic cards, Forget about that idea, graphic cards are only good for playing games. This is so because someone came up with a wonderful uh, term, blockchain, which sounds very good from the marketing viewpoint. Behind it we have a highly disruptive technology that will change the world for all of us and then it goes very well with other terminologies such as machine learning. In any world presentation that you will give, if you mention blockchain, machine learning and any other big words, people love it. And especially if you pronounce them rightly in English, well, everyone will be captivated. And then, well, explaining blockchain may seem difficult, but if I go and tell you that blockchain it is just an accounting book where people keep a record of transactions, same as our parents or grandparents did, it, so it seems that it is easier to understand. And actually, reality does not differ that much from it. And actually, say, disruptive technology, this is kind of falling short. This technology is slow because depending on the number of transactions, there is often a queue, a queue that makes you wait for a long time. And when it comes to high activity, you could be waiting for hours and hours. Or perhaps in the past, when Bitcoin was all up board okay it took years for you to complete your transaction and all this keeping this record has to be done by someone that is to say keeping a record of who has sent uh, this amount of currency to another person and people in charge of 
keeping those records are minors. They charge a fee for that, and that's where they get a, make a profit. Accounting book, and it is just somehow effective. Only somehow. So if someone comes to you and tells you blockchain will solve all your problems because of the type of currency, because of the security that delivers, if someone tells you that, you should look straight into his eyes and then you should see this person to the door very nicely, push him out and then lock the door. Don't you worry, probably this person would end up uh, participating in a round table and, uh, well, giving public presentations. But anyway, now let us go back to cyber criminals. Cyber criminals saw an opportunity in cryptocurrencies and in mining. They could see, well, many people are um, mining through their mobile phones, their PC, and then cyber criminal says, well, why shouldn't we make a profit out of it? Let us hack their machines and then let us uh, change what they are doing in their machines so that the machines point at us. And someone said, well, that's a very good idea. And then at the time they use a subtle technique. In fact, uh, a computer and if you find a wallet of cryptocurrency go ahead and steal it however a year ago cyber criminals realized that stealing wallets was not very profitable because well when they didn't find very many people uh, active at the time to steal the wallet from them and then there came a time that there were well many people going to mining and they, they could see an opportunity there back in August 2018 some cyber criminals came up with the following idea and say well we already master a technique which is about introducing malicious advertising on the internet or impersonating websites and say, why don't we use all these malicious techniques okay, to do that in cryptocurrencies? And then someone said, well, this is wonderful. Let us go ahead for this. And this is an example of a website which looks legit, but had been impersonated by criminals. And by the time someone would click on the explore more button, they would just download a miner who was controlled by cyber criminals. And not only that, cyber criminals said, okay, let us take advantages of the searches that people make on the internet and what people get as a result. And then they said, okay, they started to introduce uh, pages that convert this video to MP3 or convert it into another format. And probably this type of links are full of uh, crap. And this time, okay, they used it as a way to install a miner in your computer. And criminals continued working and they said, well, ransomware techniques. Why don't we take them to cryptocurrencies? And these plugins that we post in a kind of legit matter, those that users uh, use in the browsers, let us try to uh, leave them there, to upload them there, to see how many of them are downloaded. So therefore, fake uh, plugins continue to be there. People used to download them and to run them. So every time people were starting their computers, they were mining cryptocurrencies for cr uh, cyber criminals. But criminals were not happy, fully happy with that. And here we see these add-ons and they kind of, some of them had more uh, positive uh, comments than those that they were legit. And then sometimes, uh, well, cyber criminals also infected some uh, OS systems that well, some people believe that are not vulnerable at all, such as the case of the hidden Apple. So by 
once you inject an app or in the Apple Store for Mac OS, it is easier to inject uh, malware. In this case, we see how just the calendar, nothing wrong with it, was downloaded, no problem. But then included in this file, we could see a miner, a miner for wallet. And then if you were not careful enough, your smartphone was ruined. Well, because intensive use was being made of its processor and of the graphic card, just in case it had one. But they wanted more. I'm sure that many of you are aware of this website, which is very uh, useful to download philosophy papers. And once, uh, well, end of September 2017, someone saw something suspicious. When he was downloading philosophy papers, his computer was kind of overworking. The processor went up to 100%, the graphic card started to work uh, full performance, something unusual if you were just browsing the internet. Well, if you have Chrome and more than 12 tabs open, that could be the case, but that was not the case. So therefore, people started to look into that, and they could see that from one day to the next, the advertising was not that intrusive. However, they could see a code of line right in the middle of the website, and it was pointed to a service that was not very well known at that time. The administrators of that website had decided, always in a profitable manner for users, but without warning them, that it was much better than instead of showing invasive uh, advertising about kittens that to uh, well to do mining for the benefit saying look do you mind instead of uh, showing you advertising do you mind if your computer does some mining so they didn't do that, they didn't warn users, but many cyber criminals says, well, let us make a note of that, it seems to work. And they started to do that with all kinds of websites, malicious websites that they were controlling and also by infecting legit websites that were strongly visited, that, that they have vulnerability that allowed to inject that line of code in the middle of the website. We have well-known cases. I'm sorry if there is someone from Aragon government here. So the Employment Institute in Aragon one day could see co mining code injected in the website. Then a user said, look, I was looking for your offers in your area and my AVE has detected that. And said, yeah, okay, that bug has been infiltrated. And also, the Polytechnic University in Buenos Aires also was uh, infected as well as Cristiano Ronaldo website and then cyber criminals could see that they could make a big profit there and that users were not realizing that their computer was working a full performance as they were visiting some websites some users say well Chrome is old or my computer is old so it is not a problem if it is <laughs> performing more. And then at that time they decided to point at a segment that had not been used before in crypto mining. Not because they, it was not useful, but they just did not uh, thought about that or because they just um, had a higher level of security. So with this I mean that servers did not have the level of security that they needed. And here we have some interesting attacks. One of them was Scarlett Johansson. Well, Scarlett Johansson could hit the CPU, but she didn't do that. In this case, the attackers appealed something which is really basic, which is human curiosity and the lack of empathy on part of many system administrators. How did they do that? They looked for specific servers, data, database servers. 
this one PostgreSQL, they knew that many servers had not been updated because the administrator was not going to do it. If it worked, do not touch it. So they took advantage of perfectly known uh, tools. Those servers were fully exposed to the internet. You could just find an open port and access the server, no problem. And then in those servers, they also looked for those servers who had graphic card. Very curious, having a server with a graphic card. Well, if the server does a video, well, could easily have a graphic card in it. And once they had that information, they sent out a photograph of Scarlett Johansson to the account of the administrators of the server. They just didn't do that in a targeted fashion. They just sent that out to different corporations and to different admins at corporations. But the photograph of the actress had a code that connected to a site used by crypto criminals for downloading a miner. So there is a difference be between your computer going slowly than having a server working at 98% and 99% performance depending on the mining that is taking place. Servers are often not reviewed, not updated. So that was very, very easy for cyber criminals. With this, I mean that this was not a problem of uh, users, but was also a problem of companies. And at the same time, the server, as it was being mined, was not performing as an actual server. The problem that we have with uh, mining is that well, for a time, we were in the red area, as it happened with ransomware and with other problems. These were us, these are statistics that we gathered in our company for several weeks to un better understand and to study the performance of these threats. But as the boom of cryptocurrency went away, we could also see a downward trend in terms of miners, or at least the miners that we knew that they were injecting themselves in websites. Well, we see here summertime, there is a decrease in the activity, and after summer, the activity increased a bit. That didn't mean that they have forgotten about it, that they have gone out of it, but they were just migrating, and they have decided to do, go somewhere else. And they say, okay, let us use servers not only for minding, but also for something else. And actually, they were also good initiatives other than AVs that have done developments such as .mining.org that allows you to see whether a website has been uh, mining or not. And if so, it is flagged as uh, mining websites. And then, well, cyber criminals say, let us infect everything which is at our reach, and for them, that means any device which is connected to the internet. What is it connected to the internet nowadays? Well, other than, of course, your laptop, your tablet, video game, smart TV, refrigerator, blender, thermomix, the doll that you will be giving as a present to your children Christmas time. Keep thinking, we keep going. All that is connected to the internet. No matter the size of the device, that has a processing capacity that can be used for a legit activity or for an illicit activity. Therefore, cyber criminals said, well, good, okay, we have that out there, let us take advantage of it. The first thing that they did was something very simple, which is the closest to a laptop nowadays, smartphone. And they said, okay, let us develop threats similar to those that we've been developing for years for smartphones. And this time, let us uh, develop some to mine crypto cryptocurrencies. And you may go and say, well, a smartphone do not have the same uh, computing 
or processing capacity. Well, some smartphones have 10 gigabytes of uh, RAM. So we are talking about big devices, highly uh, powerful devices, not only for currency mining, but also for other activities. What did they do? Well, first, they continue to use the same techniques that they used before. As you are browsing the web, I either increase the visit or I block the screen of your mobile phone as you are browsing any other website. And in the meantime, I just check you. And then we could see the performance of the mobile phone. We have peaks of performance, 90%, 95%. And then they say, OK, let us also use a technique we are well aware of, which is to say introducing malware apps in uh, official applications. Here we are talking about Android. And then taking advantage of booming of cryptocurrency, they took advantage of apps that they had developed themselves that were aimed at this future new rich people, that is to say miners, could use the mobile phone to manage the wallet of bitcoins or carry activities with other users, with cryptocurrencies, with other users on the mobile phone. So, for instance, if you search in Google Play wallet of cryptocurrency, you will get all these uh, apps on the screen. And which one do you go for? Which one do you download? The one with the highest number of stars, the one that you, uh, who's the most engaging icon. And some users, once they had the app installed, they also search for other uh, apps that would allow them to operate like if they were in the exchange market. They looked for those uh, apps in Google Play and actually cyber criminals had done that before and had uh, published the apps also in Google Play. So which one shall we go for? Well, any of them because they were all fake. Uh, new users in cryptocurrency world would not be aware of this at all and therefore we just click on any of them would that load any of them smartphone will be automatically infected and therefore cyber criminals will make a profit will generate cryptocurrencies what are the consequences for hardware well if you have a production server mining 24 hours a day seven days a week that could bring about significant losses to companies. Having a smartphone mining 24-7 in a reduced space where battery, the processor, are suffering, uh, where ventilation is not as much as needed, would make the battery kind of get uh, swollen and also break the casing to have spent a fortune in this smartphone and then also just through downloading this fake app to end up ruining your telephone this is one of the bad consequences that you get from this okay and now let us talk about well the big smartphone that we have in our dining room which is a smart tv or any devices that we may connect to our TV smart to make it even smarter. And the problem that we have now is that cyber criminals came here earlier. Well, the problem here is that each manufacturer uses their own protocol. Most of them are based on units, but manufacturers do not follow single standards. LG has its own standard, uh, Sony has its own standard, but they are all different. There has been an attempt to introduce Android in smart TVs. Manufacturers such as Sony and others have succeeded. Actually, that did not uh, was not translated into bigger sales, but perhaps in the future that will result in higher sales. Well, these smart TVs are kind of like smartphones because they also have lots of apps and then the threads that have been developed for Android could be transferred to smart TV or to any device which is connected to smart TV. And what happens? Well, you may find yourself in a situation when you are watching your favorite TV show that someone has recommended to you or it just has gone into your system through a vulnerability and then you get to this, an app which is there, sitting there and apparently is doing nothing.
you continue watching your TV show, your movie, but you see your smart TV working more and more, performing more, even when you turn it off, you hear like a sound and probably you will call the technician because something is going wrong. And this has been caused by a crypto mining app that has been installed in your smart TV and which is using the hardware that you have in your smartphone to watch multimedia content. But not only that, some people want to explore new possibilities. For instance, the services that you have subscribed to are not enough for them and therefore they want more. So nowadays it's very easy to browse, to download a Cardi image and then to install all that to connect to servers of very friendly people that without asking you for anything in exchange they ask you for these premier movies and also those football games that you are extremely interested in watching. However, you should not forget that you are running a security risk and one of those risks is, as Manu said, that no one changes the password by design to connect to SSH devices. So we are in the same situation that when you did jailbreak in an iPhone a few years ago. And nowadays, also, through all this, we should not forget about this. ADOs, add-ons. So you may have, well, some of them may be by design and then, well, sometimes you just don't kind of watch all the football games and then you check for them and someone says, well, if you install this add-on, you can play more movies, you can gain access to more content and then you go, you install it and you download it. But the problem is someone, okay, wants also to do that and not only that, wants to make a profit out of that. Someone goes and says, well, there are many users downloading coding images uh, do not go through the images and not only that they continue to download add-ons without checking what's inside and what did we see well we could see that since end 2018 early 20 what well, end 2017 and early 2018 some criminals modified these add-ons bubbles and gaia from the main repository and that people were downloading with no problem. They were downloading it. They were downloading the Cody images just to gain access to that content, multimedia content. But they didn't know that that came with a surprise in it. And that was a cryptocurrency miner. A cryptocurrency miner that was installed through a Raspberry Pi device and that made criminals be successful. That is to say, having the user using that device and the small processing capacity was used to mine cryptocurrency. So I said, well, you are not going to mine a Bitcoin ever in your life with a Raspberry. Not with one Raspberry, but you can do that through one million Raspberry, two million Raspberry. How many Raspberry do you think are there in the world running no very secure versions of Cody or any other applications? This was uh, a lot and mid-August the official repository recognized that criminals had included non-official add-ons but very few users realized many of them are still infected because they have not updated. They say yes, doing fine, it's a bit hotter than usual, warmer than usual but I've bought an extra fan in AliExpress to cool it and they want change. What about infection? The United States was the first country infected, also the UK, but Spain was not far behind. It depended on the distribution that was downloaded. In Spain, we tend to download images with a different content, perhaps the in the UK and the US, they're not interested in downloading those images. But in the end, the criminals managed to do what they wanted, which is using our computers to get a profit. Cryptocurrencies, they just needed to infect a repository and leave the users to do the rest of the work. 
And we have an even more extended problem. Raspberries with cardi is quite big. But if we think about routers, the problem is even bigger. Why? Because a Raspberry user knows that they have to download an image, they have to copy it, put it into an SD, and after that they have to work. It's not a lot, but they have to do something. A router user could be anyone. My grandmother. Someone came, installed the little device with little lights, and as long as everything is green, it's okay, and I have internet at home. And if something is wrong, I call the technical services, I reset the router, and if I'm lucky, it will work, and if not, it will be changed. But people don't care about the security of the router if there's a default password that anyone can find using for the manual or um, any vulnerability. This is a router and also a recording system. Why? They tend to be associated to surveillance cameras. They're exposed to the interest. And they have lots of vulnerabilities without patching. This router, you may be familiar with it. It's from Microtech. You may be fam familiar with it. It's not particularly vulnerable. For me, it's one of the most secure ones. I use it for some things. I love their system for updates. But many people buy it because it's cheap. Many technicians from many low-cost carriers are installing it and they just leave it there as it is configured and the user does not care about anything else and they work until someone finds that those routers are exposed and they infected. And we're speaking of very serious cases. 200,000 routers infected in a single country, which was Brazil. In countries such as Spain or France, there are less routers, but these devices are are connected to the internet for 24 hours. If it was complicated for Raspberry to be reviewed, well, my grandmother is not going to access the router, change the default configuration, she's not going to allow remote access, and since she's added, she can change the firewall, and change the... well, she's, she's going to answer... she's going to give me a bad answer. Well, that means you have a lot, lots of devices which are vulnerable. They can be used to, uh, for cryptocurrencies or for something else. In the case of crypto mining routers and DVR, the most infected routers were Russia and Brazil. Why Brazil? Because these devices were installed there because they're efficient and they're low cost. So the pronunciation rate was high. Spain wasn't that bad, but be careful. And this is something we have to bear in mind. Criminals don't want to infect one, two, three devices. They need millions of devices. 200,000 is okay for, us, for starters, but they want something else. They know there are millions of devices which are vulnerable, that people are not going to update them. They know they can update them and they can infect these, these devices longer than a phone or a computer. Some, some botnets appeared and they tried to focus on this type of devices. These botnets you have, they usually have a name in Japanese, you'll see why. Let's start with Mirai, Satori, Owari, Masuta and Sora. What are these names in Japanese? Because the first one, Mirai, which means future, appeared in October 2016. It caused a strong disruption. It didn't make in the internet fault within some areas in the US and Europe. Some services such as Netflix, PlayStation Network, HBO or Spotify, which are essential for the good development or modern life and their survival as a species, failed for hours and in some cases more than a day. And I was worried because that botnet was made up of IP cameras and recording services such as the one we've seen before, but mainly IP cameras. And we had never seen a massive attack such as this one that has caused this impact. Why are these botnets called like this? 
Well, apparently, this is the map of infected devices back then. This is an approximation. We never knew the exact number of devices, and there were discrepancies. Some people said there were several hundred thousands. Others said dozens. Thousands at the end of the day were vulnerable devices that were available to the criminals. Its creator, he was a fan of animes, he named it Mirai. He launched it and he was so successful that he said, I don't want to do anything else with this because as a good criminal, I know that if I get a lot of attention, they come after me. Manu is going to come for me, he's going to put me in prison. So he started to free the code and he said, this is the source code of this botnet, take it. I'll just go and if you get caught, it will be you. This is nothing new in the criminal world. It happened a few years ago. One of the most famous botnets, such as Zeus, was given for free to anyone that wanted to use the code. The criminal organization saw that the police was after them and they said it's time to go away and many botanists appeared after that one and the same happened with this one this is in github for any of you who wants to go through it experiment with it always with educational purposes but since 2016 the increase in the number of botanists that are focused on the Internet of Things has increased a lot. On the contrary, have companies and users improved the security of these devices? Well, they can tell you that we haven't. This is a record of the number of attacks being launched against these devices through different ports, different manufacturers. The trend is of concern and many of them have crypto mining as the main goal although cryptocurrencies have fallen bitcoin is below four thousand dollars we have never seen this we hadn't seen this in a year many people have stopped mining and they some people say that the cryptocurrency bubble is over but cyber criminals don't think about this they just have to program the malware and they are very good at that they don't have to invest money in buying graphics card they use the victims and while they're making profit even if it bitcoin reaches a hundred dollars we'll continue to see these activities what can we do if there's the this is the perspective there are several solutions well this is like everything some of them are easy to apply others depend on us others depend on people above us but we could push them to take them for example we could go back to old technologies let's throw our raspberries our connected devices and use things that worked perfectly such as traditional phones, postcards, etc. Can it be done? Yes. Is it practical? No, of course, we're not going to do it. What can we do it? We could ignore this. Well, this happened to everyone, to another person. It won't happen to me. If it happens, I don't care. You can do that until it reaches you. It's not a solution. We could press so that the legislature passes new legislation based on current threats and the challenges that the IoT presents. This sounds better if it wasn't because of the fact that legislation is slow and considering this, well, in 2018 uh, it's not going to work, perhaps in 2025 they'll be up to date and the, there, there will be threats and judges have a hard time understanding what's an IP or a hash so cryptocurrencies that's beyond the understanding as they get retired and new people come perhaps things will change I'm saying this because in other countries they've already started in the US some states have already passed a minimum legislation which requires the manufacturers to comply with the minimum safe security requirements when selling their IoT devices. Basic measures such as changing default 
passwords, which are complex, and ensuring that firmware will be provided or updates. Something that should be basic, but that it's not being complied with today. And as a matter of fact, Germany has started to to include a set of measures which after 2020 they're going to be implemented. Well, it's going to be a sort of light thing. If you comply with these measures, it's in English, you can download them. It's basic recommendations. If you comply with them, you could include a nice sticker in your device saying that these basic requirements, security requirements are complied with. Does it mean that the other manufacturers won't be able to sell their devices? They will sell them, but without a sticker. It's a step, not the one I would like to see. But at least there's something we're raising awareness among users. When you're going to buy your router, you see a sticker, which is different. If there's no difference in price, you will buy the one with the sticker. And there's another solution, which is also necessary, which is important for all of you, which is discovering vulnerabilities, the most essential ones and the most complex ones, and inform about them so that people are ashamed, but you have to be responsible to. You have to communicate them. If you don't want to communicate the this to the manufacturer, tell it to the police and they will inform the manufacturer. They will tell them you have a huge hole here. Some people may think about making a living out of this. Some companies buy this legally, others do it illegally, but hackers such as yourselves do the work that these, should com these companies should do and they solve things for many companies. The end user, the one buying the router, the TV set, the wonderful thematic um, headset, they don't care about that, they don't care about security. So we should think ahead of this and we should force manufacturers to comply with minimum requirements. Let's see how we can extend it, but we have to start to start with the foundations. How are we going to work? Yes, I have to work by raising awareness and doing research. Yolanda goes around to inform me about the risks. You, when you see the wonderful devices your family your relatives have bought that they don't know how to use, you'll have to configure them. You need to explain the risks and tell them to take measures so that people don't infect them or install mining um, software. So thank you very much. I would like to thank you for being here, allowing me to give this talk and I would like to thank people listening through streaming for being there too. If you have any questions, we have a few minutes left, otherwise you can kidnap me at the end of the event.